I'm gonna just explain to you right now what I used to use tier lists for and what I liked about them compared to the modern perspective on it. Obviously, things aren't as one-to-one -one as they used to be. Like, tier lists in, like, the, you know, the pre-content creation days, it was a lot different. Tier lists nowadays are a little more, like, you, they can kind of just bait you into, like, you know, easy clicks. When I talk about this, I mean the primary discussion point relating to them, which is character strength at the highest level. Krakatoa says, uh, I love TLS discussion about a bad person. No, in fact, you're not. And I'm actually, this is something I really want to break down. TLS are a source of information above all to help you improve. TLS usually function to show where the strong points of the game are. I can give you a very easy example, okay? Let's compare Strive's tier list to Exert's. Let's actually look at my old tier list. If you look at this tier list in comparison to, let's say, Strive, right? You can tell tier lists are not one-to-one. -one. Most tier lists actually tend to differ. If you view Strive uh, tier list, you'll know that it's basically about their risk award, and that's usually where it's buried in, right? It's just like a lot of risk award, and it's like who does the most damage, who can force the most, like, you know, good risk award situation. It's almost purely in damage or like just risk away. In this game, you can actually see it's not the case. People used to discuss how Soul was broken because he could do touch of death. It wasn't about his consistency, it was just that he could do touch of death. This is a good example of bad information in the context of the game. Now in Exert, in fact, he watched, I uploaded my Potemkin set. You probably, you probably saw it once or twice. Potemkin can touch of death you. Probably like he's one of the easiest that can do it. Like theoretically. Slayer as well. Mei, Heyun, kind of Leo. Leo is a little complicated. Potemkin, Slayer. Most of these characters that are known for just like obliterating you or being associated with a quotations touch of death is clearly not strong in this um but most of it is entirely around like safety or consistent tier lists are very very good for one reason that rarely gets that really rarely gets brought up tier lists basically show you the strongest characters through specific reasons and interactions right and this may sound obvious but I'm gonna be get, going to give you an example. Nago. A lot of people hate Nago right now. People say, he do a lot of damage, I die. We have to get into the next point, right? How tier lists are used? We're gonna go back. I need to establish a space for you. People tend to use them less for discussing character strengths and things like that, and more as an excuse. So ultimately, tier lists are used to help you figure out character strength, right? Tier lists are usually a function to understand, like, if, let's say, Johnny's top one, why do you think Johnny's top one? Well, he gets good hit confirms from, you know, far away, and most characters can't match his risk reward, and he's just a generally safe character. Elle felt like she's a very stable character, super reliable in everything she does. You know, it's like the one exception where it's just like her offense is so good that it's realistic that she knocks you down and kills you in one go. Putting a lot of emphasis into stability, you can see how most of the characters on the bottom, Bedman, same sort of thing, Jacko, same sort of thing, Ram, same sort of thing. They all have stability issues, right? It's very clear. Ramathal has a problem with neutral. Jacko tends to have a problem with neutral unless it's a very specific cast of characters. Bedman tends to struggle on neutral. Answer is the one exception, and of course, he's the one I would say that I would move from this category, right? So you can kind of see what I mean by I value stability a lot. And usually if you look at most of the other players, they tend to view it the same sort of way, right? This is the main problem. Modern tier lists aren't really like this. A lot of people don't use tier lists as forms of discussion. If you make a tier list, it should be encouraged that you, you discuss it, right? But the problem is, of course, like if you make a tier list, even if you have good intentions, not a lot of people will engage with it genuinely. It's hard to get genuinely good conversations. In fact, like I I highly encourage like anyone that that hears me discuss like characters, just general balance. I would love to discuss it. If I say something, I'm ready to talk about it, right? Not because like, it's not about being right all the time. It's about figuring out strategies to essentially beat them. Because in the modern day, it is very hard to be consistent in anything, right? Like in, in, in modern fighting games, it's very hard to actually like win every tournament or even if like make every, every top eight, like it's, it's very hard. In fact, I, again, I think much, much higher of players who are much more consistent with their placings rather than like, oh, this 
person wins this tournament once and then that's kind of it. So basically, it's hard to be consistent for a variety of reasons. But like, even if we look at the lens of Strive, inherently the game can be inconsistent, right? Like just by nature of how explosive it can be. Not in the, in the sense of like, oh, anyone can just pick up and play, but like in a pool of top players, their experience is gonna be, it's gonna vary. This may be a little controversial. How to use Talix. If they are incapable of explaining their thought process, throw the tier list in the trash. There are a lot of good players who cannot explain why things happen. And then like, they're the type of players, you know, you you play them, you're like, why did you do that? And they're like, I forgot. <laughs> Everyone can be good or excel at a subject, but they cannot teach it, right? This is 95% of TLS already. No matter how good they are, if they can't explain the thought process, then how are you expected to follow it? Some people downplay because of Brew's ego, right? Everyone knows this one. It's like, oh, I lose, my character's not as good. Here's another one that's a problem. In fact, I fell into this, into this category a lot. In fact, I can directly tell you that this next category was me multiple times. Some people upplay because they attach their ego to their success. Oh, this character's actually really good. No one actually knows, bro. Just like, let me uh, show you. You know, like, like that, like <laughs> you, there's always some dude like that. And this is obviously, this is not as bad. However, this is still bad because you're using tier lists incorrectly. If some people say this, again, they upplay or they downplay, there's usually a very critical flaw. Correct. I'm actually going to correct this. Some people downplay because their comprehension of tears is poor. This train of thought is also, again, a product of if you're like, if you absorb a lot of content creator like tier lists, and let's say you play RAM, sometimes like if RAM gets nerfed, you may think like, well, the thing that I had that was good is gone. So why would they be good? Right? Like that's like, that's basically like where a lot of train of thought goes. Let's keep going on how to actually use it. Get rid of your ego at the door. When uh, Rev2 came out, Trace released a tier list that puts Soul bottom seven. He was seventh, like towards the bottom. At, like he was basically where Axel was. <laughs> and I was like, you know, oh shit, he's so bad. He's bad. So, you know, if I win, I'm good. If I lose, then whatever. You know, I jokingly go along with it, but literally like I basically did use that as a benchmark to soothe my ego. By doing that, I essentially attach a poor uh, usage of tier lists. Like of course you can do things similar to that. Like you can take pride in things like that, but the problem is it became an excuse, right? It became an ego thing. So if you're discussing tiers at all, ego has to be gone. There's a lot of people that when I see them discuss tier lists, they are extremely good at being objective and then they get to their character and it's like it's over or it's like they get to a character they dislike or it's a bad matchup it's over if you cannot disassociate your ego from tier lists you should not use tier lists right you want to genuinely engage if you use essentially a tier list by someone cannot describe their thought process you just don't understand what you're saying. If you use something and someone can't explain, how would you ever hope to explain it? Focus less on where a character is and focus more on why. And again, don't be afraid to ask questions. What a lot of people tend to do is they tend to default to essentially following the hierarchy. Basically, top player says A is good, I say A is good too. A vast majority of people who make tier lists, you know, maybe they excel in one field, right? And that's okay. Like, let's say, oh, I'm really familiar with Johnny Alpha, you know, Ben and Faust, but I'm not so comfortable with like Dizzy, Bike, and Kai, Sin, Jam. I still listed them here. The reason why this is okay is that if someone doesn't want to understand the first tier list, I could, or the first tier, I could explain it pretty well. Whereas like someone else could explain what makes Dizzy good, what makes Biking good. Breaking this down is not always easy, right? Like this subject or this topic, of course, implies a lot of not just skill in fighting games, but also like the, the ability to convey what's happening. And that's not always so simple, but it's important as a viewer or as essentially a consumer of whatever tier list <laughs> it is, you understand what takes priority and what does not. And not even from the lens of like being malicious or anything like that, just like you want to understand 
what you're talking about. It's literally just that simple. People focus too much on character strength and muddy the water. So what do I mean by this? People focus too much on, oh, my character's number one, your character's number two. In the context of Strive, people care so much about this, I have stopped paying attention to tickets because it's it's not useful. It's just straight up not. A vast majority of feedback from even top players who are extremely successful, like they just focus too much on character strength and it makes discussions very poor. Not even like, again, a context in context of how smart they are, but just the discussions are very like, just like it's whatever. In my, uh, my old YouTube videos, I made a tier list as like a sub goal, like a month into the, the game and I, I open it by saying like oh I really enjoy tier lists because of the discussion they form. This is actually going to be educational because I don't like tier lists that are just purely like you get them and there's no reason. So I'm going to explain why I think everyone or like why I put some there. So first obviously in, in about a year I've decided to never engage in, <laughs> in that discussion. So that should tell you a lot about how it is. When someone says a character is top tier for a reason that multiple other characters also fall into. Here's here's a big sign. I'm gonna tell you guys this from my experience, and Hotashi's already called it out. When someone says they do a lot of damage. In the context of Strive, you mute this person from tier list. Everyone can do damage in Strive. Any situation can come up where you get a certain amount of risk. I mean, they do the same amount of damage, right? Here's a very common discussion of what made Soul good. Bar S plus high damage or extremely high damage. Implication from risk plus how consistent his offense is. I even gave them a bone. If you believe this in 1.0, you straight up were just wrong. There's a reason why they balanced him the way that they did and they actually hit him pretty hard, right? Here's how how I would have said Soul is good in 1.0. Fire 30, I think it's, is it 30 frames? It's 25 frames, I think, total creation. 6S, um, no hurt box, so he gets checkmate. Neutral situations that lead to the above. If you actually view him from the lens of his damage is extremely high and as far as his plus, there's no reason his strength should have changed, right? Like if he didn't his he did not really lose anything. I mean he lost like what 10% damage on HEV, but if far as being plus is so good, why would that matter? Of course they added FD as well and things like that, but we can of course break down why things like that would not matter through this. FD only matters because of how his offense is, right? If because of these two things, these are actually much, much more useful in the context of, like let's say theoretically they made far S minus, which would not, have, would not have mattered, and they nerfed his damage, but they did, right? When you have moves like this that are so strong and neutral, it's more realistic that you guess right and you get put in the same sort of situation multiple times compared to, let's say, you lose this, it becomes a lot harder to play neutral, which in turn makes it a lot more difficult. Why the difference matters. In the context of offense, does not actually matter if it's plus or minus. The threat of far S 5H means that you will already be respecting bar S, which means if you had the stop process, and especially if you were like the type to get really angry over it, not only were you essentially advocating for something that you think would would change him radically, you were essentially encouraging him to stay the exact same. <laughs> especially if 6S was still the same, because then you could still do things like bar S and the 6S if you are FD. Let's break down extremely high damage. First of all, I'm going to be generous on top of it, right? Even if his damage is mediocre, one of the things you can see from consistent games, right? Basically, the better you are at doing damage, even if it's shorter, compared to if you're only good at doing one, sh like, you know, burst of damage and guessing right, usually characters who are more stable and lead into that situation tend to be more strong. It's something you can see in this game. It's honestly, almost every game in existence follows this rule. This is why grapplers tend to not be good. 
unless they get something else with them. It basically boils down to how well they can play neutral, because how well they play neutral usually dictates how well they can get into their win condition. If you actually had this change, and let's reduce his risk gain, even if it was Faust level, by nature of how often he could run into this situation, because again, the important thing to remember here is that he gets checkmate neutral situations that lead into far Fs, right? So what does this mean? Because you cannot in interact with success in this version, you end up being put into a position where he gets to essentially just use success for free, and if you didn't whiff punish it, then you're not going to. Like, obviously, Soul is still strong, but if you were under the comp like the reason of that hat, like, why that is, you basically, not only do you understand fighting games less, they've made you essentially understand games incorrectly. <laughs> You see why this is a problem. If you're actually like new to mid level, this could actually like sabotage you. Like actually like ruin your train of like process or like your your growth. Because again, as you're learning, you may think like, oh, like this is what makes X character strong. This is what people talk about. And then it just doesn't work. In fact, I bet a lot of people here have had that sort of interaction because people love to do that. They're like, oh, with Ram, you just press 5H, bro, you just win. You know what I mean? And then they do it and they, they don't win. They're like, what the fuck? <laughs> I can give you a fantastic example in someone like Soul vs. Nago, right? Usually, th these two characters can do a lot of damage, right? So, Nago, strong round start, higher turn off, round start hit, right? Soul. Okay, round start. Situational return off round start hit. Like, even if you view it from the lens of like this, well, okay, this character clearly excels at more areas or either excels in a field where it lets the fact that he does more damage matter more. Usually what people say when they say he do damage is what they mean. What they actually mean is their consistent damage is really high. Being unable to break down these two differences is major. Like, this is something that if you're not just like a content, like if you're if you're not just like you know a viewer, but if you're a content creator who does shit like this, uh, you should think about it a little more. And I'm guilty of this also, where like essentially you summarize the reason because like you can't spend forever explaining it. I do this sometimes when I'm I'm playing in context of tier lists. It's really bad because a lot of people do this without the the intention of explaining their thoughts, or they just don't want to. Yeah, I love Sage Adam's commentary. I think he's one of the best. He's a very good middle ground between explaining a lot and being very like, this is what it is, not too much detail, but it's like a good amount. But Temkin, theoretically, can have a strong offense, right? If you understand how to fight against it, it's not really that strong. It's strike throw. Johnny's offense is also strike throw. But most people would not associate the same feeling of defending against Johnny against Potemkin, right? Usually, uh, in the context of strike throw situations, obviously, again, there are exceptions in characters like Milia, you know, Raven, Chip, you know, where it's like their offense is usually just that good. Like, they're, they are designed with the intention of knocking you down once and winning the game off of it. If you talk that way about a strike throw character, either their strike throw is really that good in the context of Johnny, which of course it is, right? Like, But um, the thing about him compared to, let's say, Potemkin, again, even though they're both strike throw characters, is that usually Johnny, you cannot deal with the same way because he has less gaps to play around his offensive structure. It's harder to defend mid-screen against Johnny than it is against Potemkin, right? Most people would obviously agree. What I mean by that more specifically is let's say Potemkin, he has to call out your backdash. If he's wrong, then, you know, he's, he basically just lost his offense and it's hard for him to get there, right? If Johnny guesses it incorrectly, it does not really matter. There's not many characters who outrange him. So it's like, even if you are still in neutral, you are still essentially favoring him because of how his offense and how his kid is structured. Basically, to really summarize what I mean, through how like complete Johnny's kid is compared to someone like the Temkin, you can see very linearly that most of the time what you feel is not actually like, oh, like I got out of this, thank God I'm out of range of their offense. More realistically, what it is, is how long before Johnny dashes up and I'm blocking again. Basically, a lot of people use tier lists, uh, not terribly, but they 
They summarize it deeply. Tier lists are the one situation where I think you should not be summarizing your information. Unless, of course, you're really expecting feedback in some way. I think, like, the people that do tier lists really well, that, like, really discuss their train of thought, again, LK and and because yeah the two that really come to mind not i don't know that many other pe people who do like really in-depth breakdowns of tier lists or how they view characters but i think they tend to just hyper focus on like very hot like topical things as a result they tend to like go in circles and not really like make any major improvement it's usually just like the the character of the month changes last month it was nago because of uh, uh nubenheimer the month before it was happy chaos i feel like the month before it was ramp. And then, I mean, Leo did get nerfed, and I know a lot of Leo players did not like that. The fact that I had to make a topic about this, it's not great. Cause like, this is like one of the, like this is one of the basics of the FTC, right? This is as basic as it gets. It's hard to have top like subjects like this cause it's very like, how are you expected to comprehend this if you haven't experienced it as much, right? And a lot of the time, like people, even if you do, explain a lot of your thought process, people will not understand it or like they'll just they'll essentially contradict themselves and not realize it. It would be good if you make a tier list. It would it's it should be encouraged to have like discussions like that. You know what I mean? If it ever boils down to like su like super surface level and just like, you know, all these two options are why they win. Again, people do it like super like a ton like in the context of like RAM. I hear it a lot for RAM. And of course like there's some layer of truth, but it's there's a lot more to them than that. I think if you're going to make a tier list making that kind of emphasis is very important. Remember that tier lists are used for information. They're not a fucking people just associate they put themselves in the tier list themselves. You know what I mean? Like, it's like literally like, it's like, oh yeah, Johnny, Alfelt, you know, me, Faust, you know what I mean? Like, that's basically how they do it. You cannot do it like that. I know people that like, they see a tier list, they get like, they disagree with. They're like shaking from anger. <laughs> a lot of people do not quite understand how good and effective and useful sharing information and talking with each other is. There is so much ego in fighting games, like even from like an intermediate level. I would never do this shit with with people when I was an intermediate player in Exert ever, ever. I would never do this shit. That was me. I would be like, this dude is uh, this dude thinks uh, oh, this dude thinks Soul is ass. Uh, you suck, uh, Zidane. <laughs> you suck. That was basically how I viewed it. Right? That's how my sort of mental was. Right? Like, essentially, I grew only by talking to players that I thought were better than me. I basically refused information from people I thought were worse. And I, of course, had a very hierarchical thought process on this. I, I've talked about this before. When I beat someone, that meant their information was done. <laughs> I I pulled the cord on talking about it. And then eventually it just got to a point where it's like a handful of people that I couldn't, I couldn't consistently beat. And then... It was like, the, that, when I got to that point, I realized how shitty that mentality is. I, I realized after, uh, I won EVO that, like, I could have learned things twice as fast and twice as efficiently if I just asked questions. I have never, in Exert, asked people how to get out of their setup. Even though, like, in, like, literally, I could just be like, oh, Pep, like, how do I get out of this Zotto setup? I could see Pep in, like, 10 different ways and ask that question in, like, 20 minutes. I would never do that. I was like, why the fuck am I like that? <laughs> like, why, why does that, that makes no sense. Like, a lot of people will just say, like, you know, what I do wrong. Or, like, how do I beat the character? What buttons does your character struggle with? I would ask more specific questions, even if they don't have the answer for them, like, you know, how should I move in this matchup, right? A lot of people, if you ask them this question, they'll probably just be like, oh, fast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they'll, just, they'll say some shit. Asking the question is not bad. And some people, you literally just cannot get information from, like, period. Like, straight up, straight up, they will not be able to give you any information, period. There's nothing wrong with asking. Um, but that's it. I hope this helps.